entirely grateful. We are entirely grateful. With the entire of our being, Lord, we are saying thank you. Lord, we are grateful. Lord, we are thankful. Thank you, Daddy. To you alone be all the glory. So begin to lay down your expectations this morning. In today's service, the word of God comes forth with power. The word of God comes forth with accuracy. The word of God comes forth with precision. Say those words this morning. In today's service, we see men saved. We see the kingdom of God moving forward. We see our lives being corrected. We see instructions coming forth upon our lives. Say those words of prayer this morning. Father, in the name of Jesus, this is my heart desire. This is my heart desire and this is what I expect in today's service. Say those words intentionally. Lord, in today's service, I don't live the same. I see a supernatural turn around in today's service. Via today's service, I am corrected. Via today's service, I am directed in the path to follow. I am directed on what to do per time. I know what to do. In today's service, I know how exactly and to whom I do these things. Begin to say those prayers this morning. In today's service, we see the kingdom of God like never before. We see salvation. We see miracles. We see everything that the Lord will have us do. Begin to say those words of prayer. For in Jesus' mighty name we have prayed. And if you have any testimony, the officials will for you at love entrance you may put your hands together as we welcome the choir hallelujah let's begin to thank god let's begin to praise his name let's lift him high praise god
let's put our hands together for the Lord and take our seats. In a short while, we'll rise up to pray. And when we rise up, we'll say, Father, in the name of Jesus, and you, every faculty, staff, and student of this university, with the spirit of the fear of the Lord, all through this season and beyond. Amen. In the book of Psalms 1, from 1 to 2, it says, Blessed is the man that walketh not. Praise the Lord. So we're rising up to say, Father, in the name of Jesus, endue every faculty, staff, and student of this university with the spirit of the fear of the Lord all through this season and beyond. Let's rise up on our feet, open our mouth, call upon the name of the Lord, saying, Father, in the name of Jesus Christ, endue every faculty, staff, and student of this university with the spirit of the fear of the Lord all through this season and beyond. Father, in the name of Jesus, we ask you to endure every faculty, staff, and student of this university with the spirit of the fear of the Lord all through this season and beyond. Father, in the mighty name of Jesus, we ask you to endure every faculty, staff, and student of this university with the spirit of the fear of the Lord all through this season and beyond. Father, we ask you to empower us with the spirit of the fear of the Lord, O oh Lord. Empower every faculty, staff, and student of this university with the spirit of the fear of the Lord. All through this season and beyond in the mighty name of Jesus, Lord, let the spirit of the fear of the Lord come upon us afresh, O Lord. Father, empower us, O Lord, with the spirit of the fear of the Lord in the mighty name of Jesus. Father, we ask you to endure every faculty, every staff, every student of this university with the spirit of the fear of the Lord all through this season and beyond. Mighty God, we pray in the mighty name of Jesus that you will endure every faculty, every staff and student of this university with the spirit of the fear of the Lord all through this season and beyond in the mighty name of Jesus. Lord, we ask for your empowerment in the name of Jesus. Release your spirit of fresh upon us, O Lord. Empower us afresh to walk in the fear of the Lord all through this season and beyond in the mighty name of Jesus. Father, we ask you in the name of Jesus Christ, empower every faculty, every staff and student of this university with the spirit of the fear of the Lord all through this season and beyond in the mighty name of Jesus. Mighty God, we ask for your empowerment, O Lord. Endure us afresh with the spirit of the fear of the Lord. Lord, let the spirit of the fear of the Lord come upon us afresh in the mighty name of Jesus. Lord, that spirit that will enable us to walk in wisdom. Father, we give you glory. Let's appreciate the name of the Lord. To you be all the praise and glory. Blessed be your holy name, Lord. In Jesus' mighty name we have prayed. Let's put our hands together for the Lord and take our seats. Praise the Lord. Very shortly we shall, rise, we shall be rising up to pray again and we shall be saying, Father, in the name of Jesus, Cause your grace to abound unto every student of Covenant University to perform excellently in the ongoing Omega semester examination. And the believer will say a louder amen. 2 Corinthians chapter 9 and verse 8. And God is able to make all grace abound towards you, that ye always having all sufficiency in all things may abound to every good work. Shall we rise to our feet and make this our prayer right now? In the name of Jesus Christ, cause your grace to abound unto every student of Covenant University to perform excellently in the ongoing Omega Semester examination. Students of Covenant University to perform excellently in the ongoing Omega semester examination. Go ahead and make that your prayer right now. You are praying for yourself. You are praying for yourself. Lord, let your grace abound unto every student of Covenant University to perform excellently in the ongoing Omega semester examination. Go ahead, pray that prayer for yourself right now. 
in the name of Jesus Christ. Father, in the name of Jesus, cause your grace to abound unto every student of Covenant University to perform excellently in the ongoing Omega semester examination. Is the grace of God that makes great in life. Lord, let your grace abound unto every student, Lord, of Covenant University to perform excellently in the ongoing Omega semester examination. Lord, we pray, let your grace abound, Lord, unto everyone, Lord. Let your grace be released upon every student of Covenant University to perform excellently in the ongoing Omega semester examination. In the name of Jesus Christ. Pray that prayer with all your heart right now. Pray that prayer with all your might. Father, cause your grace to abound unto every student of Covenant University to perform excellently in the ongoing Omega semester examination. In the name of Jesus Christ. Is somebody praying that prayer right now? In the name of Jesus, Lord, let your grace abound. Let your grace abound, Lord, unto every student of Covenant University to perform excellently in the ongoing Omega semester examination. Our eyes are on you, Lord. They look unto him and they were lighting and their faces were not put to shame. Lord, let your grace abound, Lord. Let your grace be released unto every student of Covenant University to perform excellently in the ongoing Omega semester examination in the name of Jesus Christ. Let that be your prayer right now. You want to emerge excellently in this ongoing examination. Let your heart be made known unto the Lord. He said, call unto me and I will answer you. I will show you great and mighty things which thou knowest not. Lord, let your grace be released unto every student of Covenant University to perform excellently in the ongoing Omega semester examination in the name of Jesus Christ. Lord, let your grace be released, Lord. Release your grace unto all, Lord. Let your grace abound unto all, Lord. Let your grace abound unto every student of Covenant University to perform excellently in the ongoing Omega semester examination. Lift up your hands and celebrate Jesus. Lord, we bless your name. This is the confidence that we have that whatsoever we ask, the Lord has done it. Lord, we bless your name. In Jesus' glorious name, we have prayed. Please put your hands together for Jesus Christ and please be seated.
hands this morning and begin to celebrate the name of the Lord for granting you a great privilege to be alive one more time. Give him all the glory this morning. Give God all the adoration is ever faithful, dependable God. There is none like this Jesus. Lord, we celebrate your mighty name. We give you all the glory this morning. We thank you for your faithfulness. To him alone be all the glory. In Jesus' mighty name we have prayed. I count it a great privilege given unto me this morning by my father, the chancellor of this great institution. And I pray that the grace upon his life, the same this morning, will be at work. I say will be at work in the name of Jesus Christ. Lord, our Heavenly Father, we thank you one more time. We thank you because you are ever faithful, dependable. Lord, we rely on you this morning. The Bible says our help is in the name of the Lord who made heaven and earth. Lord, let your help be available to everyone this morning. Let your help be sufficient for everyone this morning. Especially in this season for every student, let your help be available. Thank you, mighty God. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Please, can we give the Lord a clap? He's a good God. As we have our seat. We've been on the series, understanding the cost and cure of ungodliness. Understanding the cost and cure. Every transformed life is rooted in righteousness. Every. There is no substitute to it. There is no alternative to it. And I pray in the name of Jesus. That every one of us we embrace in the name of Jesus Christ. Very important to the fulfillment of God's agenda for every one of us. It's important. That is why we need to know why exercise ourselves unto godliness. Why? In the book of 1 Timothy 4, verse 8, it says, For godly exercise profited little, but godliness is profitable unto all things, having promise of the life that is now and of that which is to come. Now, thank God for our various engagement. But I want you to know this morning, there is little. Your engagement in this physical work can do without the spiritual. And this is what the scripture explained to us clearly. He said, there is little our engagement in the physical work can offer. Very little. He said, for bodily exercise profited little. He said, but godliness is profitable unto what? All things. Unto what? 
unto what? All things. He said, having the promise of the life that is now. That is, you possess your now by living a godly life. Not only do you possess your now, you also take control of your tomorrow. Please listen carefully. The goal you choose will change your life if you achieve it. Please, I want us to look at the life of the chancellor. Look at the great things that God wrought through him because of a decision of a man to live right. Think of the goal. Think of the great things that God will run through your life if you live right. Look at the life of the pro chancellor. This is our father's book before us. Who took a decision to live right? And today, the global world is celebrating the goodness of God in their life. I have a good news for someone this morning. You are the next in line. I said, you are the next in line. I said, you are the next in line. Please listen to me. There are two things that God desires from you. The same. The devil is searching to possess. And what are those two things? Our time and our heart. I pray for you this morning, may God take your heart. I say, may God take your time. I say, may God take your heart. May Satan not take anyone's heart here. If you believe, let your amen be louder, please. It is the spiritual thing that gives meaning to the physical. You know what the Bible says? It says the people of the world, they are wiser than the people of the kingdom. Because they recognize that there is little you can make out of life in the physical without the spiritual. So the people in the wicked world, they engage intensely spiritual in their wicked form. To control the physical. But you and I serve the good and the great God. We serve the great God. Please listen to me. If you can't control your action, you are not in control of your life. If you can't control your action, you are not in control of your life. Every redeemed child of God is ordained to live from inside to the outside. Joshua chapter 1 verse 8, he said, This book of the law shall not depart out of your mouth. He said, And ye shall meditate on it day and night, that thou mayest observe to do according to all that is written therein. He said, For then thou shalt make thy way prosperous, he said, then thou shalt have good success. So there is no alternative to godliness. If true success is your goal, please, I want us to think of the great things. When you achieve your goal in life, and true success in life, is unattainable without godliness. Because godliness secures our now and procures for us our tomorrow. Among others, let's look at what ungodliness does. Number one. Now, ungodliness blocks access to healing and health. In the book of John chapter 6, verse 63. John chapter 6, verse 63. 
the B part, it says, the word that I speak unto you, they are spirit and they are life. Now, if you look at the A part, it says, it's the spirit that quickened. He said, the, it is the spirit that quickened. He said, the flesh profited nothing. He said, the word that I speak unto you, they are spirit and they are life. Listen to me, there is little this natural life can take you and I. It is the Zohe life of Jesus when we walk in obedience according to his word that sustains us. This natural world we are today is subjected to so many limitations, so many barriers. So it's our walk of obedience that grant us access to the spirit of mind. In the book of Mark 2, verse 5 to 11, And when Jesus saw their faith, he said unto them, Seek of passes, son, thy sin is be forgiven thee. But there were certain of the scribes sitting there and reasoning in their heart, Why do I this man don't speak blasphemies who can forgive sin but God only? And immediately when Jesus perceived in his spirit that they so reason within themselves, he said unto them, Why reason ye these things in your heart? Whether it's easier to say to the sick of the person, that sin be forgiven thee, or to say, Arise and take up thy bed and walk. But that ye may know that the Son of Man had power on hand to forgive sin. He said so to the sick of the passy. Say unto thee, arise and take up thy bed and go thy way into thy house. James 5, verse 14 and 15. James 5, 14, 15. Is anyone sick among you? Let him call on the elders of the church. Let them pray upon him, anointing him with oil in the name of the Lord. And the prayer of faith shall save the sick. And the Lord shall raise him up. If he had committed sin, they shall be forgiven him. Listen to me. There is no alternative to living right. One of the things that the Holy Spirit does is to empower us to live above the natural circumstances. To live a life of health and vitality. So sin block our access to the nature of God. And number two, among God that's ungodly block access to durable riches. Thank God for whatsoever you do, it is God's blessing upon what anyone does that bring increase. Psalm 112 verse 1 to 3, he said, praise you the Lord, blessed is the man that feareth the Lord, that delight greatly in his commandment. His seed shall be mighty upon the earth. The generation of the upright shall be blessed. And look at verse 3. He said, wealth and riches shall be in his house. He said, the righteousness endure forever, not ceasing her. He said, shall endure forever. Listen to me, friends. We have our father before us. And that is a clear example for every one of us to see. They make a choice to live right. And look at how great their destiny is today. If you today also make the same choice, listen to me, friends. Something is inside you, and that potential called greatness, as the Lord liveth, we emerge in the name of Jesus Christ. If you say no to ungodliness, you say yes to a great future. You say yes to wealth and prosperity. Each time you say no to ungodliness, 
you are saying yes to a great and a sure future. When you say no to ungodliness, you are saying no to a, a great future that no devil can hinder or stop. Blessed is the man. He said, wealth and riches shall be in his house. And number three, block access to help in times of trouble. In the book of John chapter 5, verse 5, and John chapter 14, verse 5 and 6. John 14, 5 and 6. Now, Jesus was about going and he kept communicating to his disciples, I will soon go. I will soon go. And Thomas, knowing who he is, probably maybe they've been di discussing in a smaller cluster. Thomas summoned the courage to have to ask a very important question. Please listen to what Thomas said. Thomas said unto him, Lord, we know not whether thou goest, how can we know the way? How can we know the way out of trouble? How can we know the way out of challenges of life? Now listen to what Jesus said. He replied, Jesus said unto him, I am the way, the truth, the life. No man, oh yes, no man, comment unto the Father but by me. And Jesus, as we know, is the word of God. So when you stand to disobey God, you are blocked from assessing help from God. He said, no one can get to my father except that individual obey my word. So each time we walk in obedience, we are blocking our houses to receive help in times of of trouble. Psalm chapter 33, verse 18 and 19, Behold, the high of the Lord is upon them that fear him, upon them that hope in his mercy, verse 19, to deliver their soul from death and to keep them alive in famine. You walk in godliness, you can lack his help. You can't lack the way. The truth is always available. Life. The way, the path to follow at all times. And number four, access to the divine secret of God. Psalm 25 verse 14, the secret of the Lord is with them that fear him. And it will show his covenant. 1 Corinthians 2, verse 9 and 10, eyes have not seen, ears have not heard, it has never entered the heart of men, what God will do for them that love him. And verse 10 says, all those things that I have not seen, he said they are unveiled by the Spirit. He said that the God revealed them to us by his Spirit. For the Spirit searcheth all things, yea, the deep things of God. So we can only have access to the secret, to the deep things of God when we walk in righteousness. So ungodly block access to divine secret. Now, but to deal with the force of ungodliness, what do we need to do? Number one, Hebrews chapter 12 verse 4, ye are not you have not yet resisted unto blood, striving against sin. Hebrew 12, 4. Now, number one, we must crave for the endowment of the spirit of holiness. Remove every negative habit. Listen to me. It is not enough to work hard when other habits are pulling you down. The goal you choose will change your life if you achieve it. Matthew chapter 5 verse 6, Blessed are they with to hunger and thirst after righteousness, for they shall be fed. They shall be filled. They shall be fed. Number two, 
To deal with the force of ungodliness, we must engage the power of the blood. To remove every negative habit. Hebrews chapter 9 verse 14, how much more shall the blood of Christ, which through the eternal spirit, offer himself with a spot to God. Purge our conscience, conscience from dead works to serve the living God. We need to purge ourselves from every dead work. Why? If you can't control your emotions, you are not in control of your life. That's why you need to plead the blood of Jesus. You need to plead, punch your conscience. Number three, to deal with forms of ungodliness, we must continue in fellowship with the saints. Listen to me, just like the physical exercise. If you don't stop doing it, it will soon show. You can't start physical exercising and stop and expect it to show. The same with godliness. As you keep it on and on. Please don't quit fellowship. Keep pushing. Keep learning. Keep improving. Better understanding is a proof of growth. Keep the progress on. Listen to me, friends. We've seen our father, you are the next in line. I say you are the next in line. You know what the Bible says? It says the next expectation of the creature is the manifestations of the sons of men. And you are the one the scripture was referring to. Listen to me. But this is becomes a thing that looks impossible without Christ. When Christ is missing, crisis becomes the order. Whatever habit that want to stop you, you need to put a stop to it. And you have an opportunity this morning to make a difference. A father in faith, the chancellor make a choice. And today we are celebrating the world. For great things that God is going through his life. The, 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 the world will soon applaud the great things that God will do through you. But there's a choice you must make this morning to say yes to Jesus. You are here this morning, you want to say yes to Jesus. I want you to put your hand on your chest this morning where you are seated. Please, I don't want you to look at your neighbor. This is all about your life. This is all about your destiny. This is all, all about you. You must move. Your life must move. Put your hand on your chest, all eyes closed, and say after me, Lord Jesus, I surrender my life to you. All things have passed away. All things have become new. Thank you for saving me. And thank you for delivering me. You pray this prayer. I want you this morning to rise on your feet and come forward now. I want you to be bold. That thing that want to stop you, I want you to confront it this morning by rising on your feet and coming out. Come out now. You pray that prayer, come out. Please, can we clap more for them? I want you to confront that issue that want to stop you this morning by standing on your feet to say yes to Jesus and by coming out boldly this morning. I want you to stand on your feet and come out boldly. Don't look at your neighbor. Don't look at your friend. This is all about your life that must be right. This is all about your destiny that must be right. Or oh, someone is saying, what will people say? What about your God, your creator? What will your creator say? It's more important to you than what anyone will say this morning. Are you clapping for Jesus? Clap them all, clap them all, clap them all, clap them all, clap them all. Oh, thank you for making a choice, a great choice this morning. A great choice to be right, a great choice to do right, a great choice to act right. Thank you, mighty God.
please put your hand on your chest. I pray for you this morning that Jesus that you receive. We abide with you. With the purpose of God for your life, no devil will truncate it. As you live right and say right and do right from today, everything that seems wrong will begin to be right. In the name of Jesus. So shall it be. In Jesus' mighty name. Please follow this, uh, sister. The Lord bless you. Give the Lord a clap. Hallelujah. You are going to be rise on your feet this morning and pray to God. Make my life right. Make my destiny right. You know yourself more than anyone. You know certain habits, certain behavior. That if you continue, it will stop you from achieving that goal. That God-giving goal in your life. I want you to lift up your voice and pray that prayer. Lord, help me this morning. Lord, help me this morning. I want you to pray for his help. Pray for his help this morning. Whatever habit, whatever behavior, attitude, what you do, sin that easily beset, that can stop the achievement of God giving goals in your life, that can hinder your progress, that can truncate your destiny. I want you to lift up your voice and pray now. Thank you, mighty God. In Jesus' mighty name. I pray for everyone this morning, no one's destiny shall be truncated. No one's destiny shall be aborted. Now we, we've seen in the life of God's servant, walking, what walking right can do to a destiny. What doing right can do to a destiny. Listen to me, God does not have a prefer. The same he has done in the life of our father that is yet doing, that will yet do more, he can yet do the same for us if you follow the same path. I pray for everyone that is here, your tomorrow shall be greater. I say your tomorrow shall be greater. I say your tomorrow shall be great. I say shall be mighty in the name of Jesus. Lift up your hands and appreciate God this moment. Give him all the glory. Celebrate his mighty name, his word of our prayers. Just thank him and thank him and thank him. It's worthy, it's worthy. Thank you, mighty God. In Jesus' mighty name. As you go this morning, the God of this commission goes with you. I pray the spirit of wisdom and understanding to rest upon you throughout your exam season in the name of Jesus Christ. Concerning every subject or question, you won't lack understanding. You will not lack knowledge. The wisdom of God shall be available to you. In the name of Jesus, and so shall it be in Jesus' mighty name. And surely, God's goodness and mercy shall follow us all the days of our lives, and we shall dwell in the house of the Lord forever and ever. Amen. Welcome to 2021, your year of supernatural turnaround. Then expect turnaround to become your new identity in Christ. And let everyone say, remain ever blessed. Have a great time concerning your exams.